In 3800 BCE, Stone Age hunter-gatherers roamed the globe. In the Nile Valley, the Neolithic civilization gave way to a culture presided over by strong leaders. They adopted symbols to denote kingship that was echoed in the later civilizations of Egypt. But they were not Egyptian, they were Nubian. You have probably heard the term Nubian before, and although you won't find Nubia on a modern map, Nubians still live in Egypt, Sudan, and other countries. Unfortunately, they have suffered from many years of discrimination. The ancient Nubians were a powerhouse of culture and civilization, and their most famous nation was the Kingdom of Kush. Kush was located in modern-day Sudan, and although it was technically under Egyptian control from around 1550 BCE, it kept distinct cultural differences from the Egyptians. The Egyptians and the Nubians shared gods, and there are records of royal marriages between the Egyptian and Kushite rulers. Egyptian art depicts the Nubians with darker skin and cropped hairstyles, and Nubian art shows them wearing animal skin cloaks, large earrings, and patterned fabrics. There were many power struggles between Egypt and Nubia, and in the mid-8th century BCE, a Kushite king named Kashta conquered Upper Egypt. Kashta's son, Pai, continued his legacy and soon had the rest of Egypt under his control. Some historians believe that the Egyptians invited this invasion to help them defeat the Libyans, who were raiding Egypt. Whatever the reason, the result was a century-long reign of Kushite kings, the Nubian pharaohs. Also known as the Black Pharaohs, they revived the state religion, resurrecting pyramids as royal tombs. They also established a stable government and attempted aggressive expansion into the Near East. The most influential of the Black Pharaohs was the son of Pai, Taharqa. He oversaw massive construction projects across Egypt and expanded temples and monuments. The Kushite rulers are known as the 25th dynasty of Egypt and ruled from roughly 743 to 653 BCE. Once the Assyrian Empire had driven the Nubian pharaohs from Egypt, the Egyptian rulers of the late period attempted to erase all evidence of the 25th dynasty. Statues and steels were destroyed, and their names were removed from the historical record. But the Kingdom of Kush did not end there. It continued until the 4th century CE. This final period of the Kushites is sometimes referred to as the Meroitic period, after their capital, Mero. Mero was a port city on the Nile and was an important trade point for access to the Red Sea and Inner Africa. The land was fertile due to irrigation from the Nile and was located close to iron and gold mines. The Meroitic culture used pyramids as a kind of giant headstone for the tombs of their kings, queens, and nobles, and beneath each pyramid lay a burial chamber. These pyramids are smaller and steeper than the old Egyptian models, but a necropolis at Moreau contains more pyramids than all of Egypt. The Nubian kingdom of Kush thrived for many centuries, but was weakened as the Roman Empire began to dominate trade. In around 350 CE, Moreau was abandoned for good. Among their contemporaries, the Nubians were famous for trade. Nubia's geographical position put it in a prime location as a trading hub that could be accessed by all the different peoples in the region. Their unique trade links probably enabled the Nubian society to flourish as substantially as it did. However, this advantage also made it a target for many cultures who wished to dominate trade in the area. The Nubians were in an excellent position to negotiate trade with many people. They had access to Central Africa, Egypt, and Southwest Asia and had a large number of valuable commodities at their disposal. Nubian farmers living along the Nile grew grapes, dates, lentils, and peas, while those in the desert mined for minerals, precious stones, and gold. Nubia's valuable trade centers made it a target for the ancient Egyptians. Much of what we know about Nubia today comes from Egyptian texts, and the Nubians are first mentioned in the context of trade. One of the most important Nubian trade centers, according to the Egyptians, was a place called Yam. We do not know precisely where Yam was located, but it was known for its wood, ivory, and gold trade. The Nubians traded cattle, carnelian, gold, ivory, animal skins, hardwood, and incense with the Egyptians in exchange for manufactured goods, including linen, beer, wine, and vegetable oils. There is evidence that the Nubians relied on the Egyptians for grain, despite some Nubian tribes farming it themselves. But it wasn't just the Egyptians who coveted Nubia's trade centers. Later, the Romans would set their sights on Nubia. 
While being a hub for trade was one reason Nubia was a target for invaders, another was their gold deposits. Nubia was so rich in gold that some think the name comes from the Egyptian word for gold, Nabu. Although the Nile River was a predominant source for Egypt's vast number of gold artifacts, Nubia was a significant contributor. It is estimated that there were around 250 gold mines in the Nubian desert. During the 1960s and 1970s, many geological teams conducted gold prospection programs in Egypt and the northeast of Sudan. They uncovered many signs of ancient extract mining, including the remains of settlements, mine shafts, and stone mills. Unfortunately, these artifacts went unclassified as the teams did not coordinate with archaeological experts, and Nubian mining techniques have been lost to antiquity. What we do know is that they were highly effective in locating and extracting gold deposits, despite having none of the modern equipment that is now seen as essential for finding veins of gold. In their time, the ancient Nubians were renowned archers. Egyptians called their land Taseti, meaning the land of the bow. The Nubians used bows and arrows for hunting since at least the Neolithic period, as evidenced by Nubian rock art from around 10,000 to 4500 BCE. Their skill with a bow provided them with the skins and ivory that they used in their trade deals. The Nubian archers were so skilled that the military forces of other nations valued them highly. There were reports of Nubian archers in the Egyptian army as early as 2300 BCE when a general of the 6th dynasty of Egypt named Weni employed them as mercenaries. Nubian warriors show up in paintings, reliefs, and tomb models throughout Egyptian history. In the tomb of Meseti, a model of a troop of Nubian archers gives us a wonderfully detailed picture of what these famous warriors looked like. Wearing red and white cloth skirts with necklaces and hairbands, the marching archers carry their bow in one hand and their arrows in the other. This well-preserved example shows us that a band of Nubian archers was valuable enough to be of use in the afterlife. But it was not just the Egyptians that sought to utilize their skills, and in the first millennium BCE, Nubian archers served in the Persian army. Nubians used bows throughout their history, and Nubian royals in the 5th century CE were buried with bows and arrows. At this time, elite Nubian warriors loosed arrows from horseback, employing thumb rings to increase their power and accuracy. In Muslim accounts of their 8th century invasion of Nubia, it is noted that the Nubian archer's accuracy drove the Muslim armies away. The Nubian bow evolved over time to suit the needs of the archer. Ancient rock paintings depict a self bow. At around 150 centimeters in length, it was not quite as long as the English longbow. The bows were made from a single piece of wood with recurved tips that bent away from the archer when unstrung. This curve was thought to be achieved by steaming the wood and bending in its shape. Instead of fitting the string by a knot, the Nubian bowyers secured the string to the tip with leather straps, perhaps not wanting to weaken the structure of the bow tip. By 350 CE, composite bows were widely used by the Nubians. These were shorter and probably more popular because they could be used on horseback. Due to the use of thumb rings, we know that these mounted archers used a thumb draw similar to that of the Eurasian steppe nomads. These thumb rings have been found alongside other archery equipment at Nubian burial sites, and some have even been found in the left thumbs of buried archers. Nubia set itself apart from many of its contemporary civilizations with its treatment of women. Not only were women equal to men in many Nubian cultures, but they were also revered. Nubian royal women were extremely powerful ruling alone in many cases. During their time ruling Egypt, the Nubians developed a culture of appointing the title of God's Wife of Amun to their daughters. This was not just an arbitrary title, and the God's Wife of Amun would serve as an administrator to the large economic domains belonging to the God of Amun. Cults associated with the goddess Isis were prominent in Nubia. Isis was considered the queen of all gods, goddesses, and women and her popularity indicates the respect shown of all Nubian women at the time. Nubia also had a strong tradition of warrior queens. Perhaps the most famous of these queens was Amanarinas. She was the second queen of the Kingdom of Kush and ruled from 40 to 10 BCE. She had lost both her husband and her eye in battles. She ruled Kush until her death. Amanarinas was most famous for her campaigns against the Roman army. After Rome defeated Egypt, Amanarinus knew that its sights would soon be on Kush. 
Not wanting to wait until the Romans attacked, she took her army and struck the Roman settlements while they were distracted. She brought home a bronze head of Emperor Augustus, which she buried under the entrance to her palace, letting her people literally walk over their enemy. The Romans did not take this attack lightly, and later that year they invaded Kush, advancing as far as Napata and selling many Kushites into slavery. Amata Renus launched a brutal counterattack, reportedly feeding her captives to her pet lion, and there are some accounts of her using war elephants in battle. While the Kushites could not retake Kasser Ibram back from the Romans by force, the Roman leaders agreed to begin peace negotiations. Peace was achieved around 22 BCE, and it favored the Nubians, with Kasser Ibram given back to the Kushites. We only know information about this Nubian warrior queen through Roman reports, as no one has been able to translate the Kushite hieroglyphs that tell their side of the story. But in 1914, an excavation of a temple in Kush uncovered the head of an Augustus statue. It was buried underneath the depiction of a Kushite ruler. As the rest of the wall painting had crumbled, we can't be sure that it was a Monoranus. But perhaps this fierce warrior queen wanted Augustus' head under her feet for eternity. Despite our knowledge of the Nubians, much of their history has been lost. During the 1960s and early 1970s, the Aswan High Dam was built in Egypt. The High Dam was built to generate electricity for the expanding Egyptian population and to control the Nile flooding that had aided farmers along the Nile for millennia. Unfortunately, the cultural implications of this project were not so beneficial, and many ancient temples and fortresses were flooded. Tens of thousands of Nubians were forced to move from their ancestral lands due to controlled flooding. Farmers who live in the area today are forced to use costly artificial fertilizers to replace the nutrient-rich silt that used to be deposited by the annual flooding of the Nile. The Nubian way of life had been destroyed for many after the building of the first Aswan Dam, which flooded 45 villages in an area now known as Old Nubia. The centuries-old rivalry between Egypt and Nubia still bubbles under the waters of the Nile, and today, Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia are still in conflict over this life-giving resource. To learn more about ancient Nubia, check out our book, Ancient Nubia, a captivating guide to one of the earliest civilizations in Africa and African kingdoms such as the kingdoms of Kerma and Kush. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, Grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.